Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 22nd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide for you a, an analysis of a region of ice in the Arctic that scientists for a long time had thought would be the last refuge for Arctic sea ice in the event that fossil fuel burning continued and that Arctic warming and polar amplification pushed Arctic sea ice to the point where we saw near ice-free or ice-free conditions in the summertime. And that is this region north of Greenland and near the Canadian archipelago, which has for long been a refuge for what is known as perennial ice or multi-year ice. But during 2018, we've seen a, a couple of events where sea ice has lifted away from the northern coast of Greenland, one back in February due to a warm wind event, and one during August. Vulnerability to this ice and the overall mobility of Arctic sea ice as a whole is likely to continue to increase. And it's, it's also likely that Arctic observers and Arctic scientists might have to rethink where havens for sea ice will be in the coming years as the ice apparently has become very mobile and very broken. So what I'm going to do for you is, is go ahead and advance this NASA worldview satellite shot to the recent day. This, the, this present satellite shot is showing July 29th. I'm going to go ahead and advance it so you can see how much sea ice has thinned and lifted away from the northern coast of Greenland and from this section of the Canadian archipelago. So moving into early August, by August 5th we see that sea ice has already lifted away from the north coast of Greenland and that there is considerable thinning of sea ice north of the Narrow Strait as well as some some polinias beginning to open up north of the Canadian archipelago. As we advance into the second week of August, the ice thins and lifts even more, so that by August 13th, we have an extensive zone of open water north of Greenland with the North Narrow Strait region considerably broken and a, a very large Polinia opening up north of the, the eastern Canadian archipelago. By the third week of August, the breakup is even more extensive, such that by August 19th, a large zone stretching from about, let's see, 93 degrees longitude to, let, let me check this again. Yeah, 93 degrees l longitude to around 14, 13, maybe 10 degrees longitude is either showing open water, large sections of open water, or considerably broken and thinned sea ice. Drilling down closer to the Greenland coast in the northeast, we find that the open area of water stretches about 20 to 30 miles northeast of the coast of Greenland, with the section of open water near the Canadian archipelago not quite as wide, perhaps 10 miles away. Looking at the region of ocean north of the Narrow Strait, the section of ice is broken and diffuse and as we move the satellite frames, we can see that the ice is quite mobile, subject to the whims of winds and currents in the region. So this ice loss has generated quite a bit of interest in the news media, and rightfully so, in my opinion. Recently, The Guardian put together an excellent article on the subject entitled, the Arctic's strongest sea ice breaks up for the first time on record. And I'm going to read one, uh, well, actually a couple quotes from this article. 
But at first, I'd like to note this excellent graphic showing sea ice volume losses based on polar science center measurements with sea ice volume considerably lower now than the 1980s. So it's worth noting that Walt Meyer, a senior scientist at the U.S. National Snow and Ice Data Center, notes that the sea ice has nowhere else to go in this region typically, so it piles up. On average, it's about four meters thick and can pile into ridges that are 20 meters thick or more. This thick compacted ice is generally not easily moved. So it provides some context for this region of ice now that, that has moved and has broken up. And I'm going to go on just to continue this quote from Walt Meyer, which is, which is, is critical, which it, I think provides a, a critical context. He notes that, however, that was not the case this past winter in February, March, and now. The ice is being pushed away from the coast by the winds. It's worth noting that, that a number of researchers ha have found this, this particular event to be rather scary, as Thomas Laverne noted, he, who's a scientist at the Norwegian Meteorological Institute. So, so what's ongoing is, is, is pretty unusual and perhaps or likely unprecedented. And to provide some more context, Dr. Gavin Schmidt took a look at paleoclimate and, and found that the likelihood that, that there, there were last long periods in which the sea ice moved far away from Greenland was perhaps about 7,000 years ago when there was evidence of, of ice rafted debris left on beaches due to movement of, of ice away from shore, which, which enabled the, the pileup of of, of, of raised beaches in the area. So, so there's some indicators that this hasn't happened at least for about 7,000 years. And it's likely that as the Arctic continues to warm, we're, we're, we're going to see conditions that weren't seen since the Emian, which is about 115, 120,000 years ago. And if we continue to burn fossil fuels, the Arctic context will tend to shift more radically toward the Pliocene. So some very severe context for sea ice loss. This was a region of ice that was seen as, as typically very stable, but unfortunately has become rather unstable during recent weeks and months driven by polar amplification due to human-caused climate change and polar warming overall. Before I, I close, I'd just like to leave you with this graphic from Zach Labe. Zach has done some bang-up observation of the Arctic, and in particular this year, the Atlantic sector near Greenland has seen record low sea ice, which has contributed the, to these events where sea ice has lifted away from the northern coast of Greenland, these regions of sea ice that are typically very thick and very stable, thinning and, and, and now breaking up. So new record lows for a specific section of the Arctic, which in many ways has been a keystone to Arctic ice stability, Arctic sea ice stability in particular. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.